Um, I have a question regarding the perennial philosophy and to what extent Sufism is uh, linked to it in the sense of um, perennial philosophy having the definition of all religions um, applying its universal truth to everything. Um, because Rumi, for instance, had Christian disciples and you were talking about Islam being multifaceted in the sense of having all these schools. So uh, attracting many mm -hmm. people from all sorts of uh, places. So what is your um, answer to mm -hmm. brain of philosophy being linked directly to Sufism? I think there are a lot of modern intellectuals, and not just in the West, that are made anxious by certain absolutist and exclusivist claims made for Islam or for any other revealed religion that seems to discredit or belittle the aesthetic and spiritual and intellectual accomplishment of other traditions and try to find in their own Islamic heritage some way of reaching out to affirm the autonomous validity of those non-Muslim forms. Uh, however, if we look at uh, Rumi, for instance, who you mentioned, we also find in Aflaki's biography that he took the conversion of dozens of Christian preachers, uh, priests and preachers. Uh, he was happy to have disciples. They were studying and they wanted to learn his way. But you only have to read his poetry to realize that it's about the Holy Prophet and the Quran and it's very explicitly Islamic. So the fact that he took on Christian disciples and allowed them into his circle simply meant that he was a generous and hospitable Muslim scholar. It doesn't mean that implicitly he was validating the trinity, the hierarchy of priests, the vicarious atonement and specific Christian teachings. Uh, there is an attraction, particularly those among, for those who are repelled by modern sort of exclusivism and fundamentalism, in the idea that somehow all religions are pointing towards a single transcendent core. There is a difficulty, however, in that they are naturally mutually exclusive in some of their fundamental truth claims. So many Buddhists would say, Christians say there's a personal God who is love, who created the world. We don't believe that. The Buddhists and the Christians cannot simultaneously be right. The Jews would say that divine nature is ultimately simple. God is one and unique, and there's no internal differentiation in the divine nature. Most of the Christian will say that is incorrect. The divine nature is characterized by triune deity. In the subcontinent, most people will say after death, there is a kind of reincarnation. In the world of monotheism, people will say there isn't reincarnation, there is only judgment, heaven and hell. Those contradictory thoughts cannot simultaneously be true. And if you say they're just relative, then you're in effect denying the religions the right to tell people what is the nature of reality in the name of some undifferentiated ultimate concern or vague, not even theistic reality or truth behind them all, which is not really any religion at all, but a kind of misty deism. So Sufism uh, historically has been very Islamic in its insistence that the Holy Prophet is indeed God's true prophet to the world in this time, and his way is an all-embracing <coughs> and inclusive and diverse way. Uh, and the Qur'an is at the heart of Rumi and is at the heart of Ibn Arabi. Um, Ibn Arabi has himself some sometimes harsh words to say about Christian doctrines like the doctrine of the Trinity. He would have been the last person to say that all the metaphysics of the world religions are simultaneously true. He believed his system was right.